Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to take this kit that we unboxed. We're going to assemble it with all the stock hardware and everything and we're going to go ahead and demo it. So in our previous video of this series, if you will, we unboxed this guitar kit. We took a look at it, made sure everything looked good, which it does. I'm excited to give it a try. Today what we're going to do is assemble it just in its stock form, nothing done to it, and we're going to test out how the stock hardware sounds. Now when I say nothing done to it, I mean pretty much nothing. I'm really just putting it together. The only thing that I have done to make any kind of adjustment whatsoever, and it's not even that, is I took a piece of 220 grit sandpaper and I ran it up and down the back of the neck a couple times to make it nice and smooth. These guitar kits come with a coat of sealer on them and that sealer raises the grain when they spray it on there. The very first coat always does that. This makes it easier for you to finish because you can just sand it lightly, knock that grain off and seal it again and it'll seal up way quicker than it would otherwise. But like I said, it raises the grain. So what it does is it leaves you with a very, very rough surface when you first get it. The beauty of it is you can knock that off super quick. So this, to smooth his neck down now, it's very comfortable at, at the level that it's at with 220 grit. Uh, that took me probably eight seconds. Not bad. So today we're keeping it super simple. This is only gonna take a few minutes. This kit actually comes with the pick guard already in it. I'm just gonna wire in my jack, put in my bridge hardware, and put the neck on with the tuners and everything, and that's gonna be it. We're gonna string it up and test it out and see how it sounds. Now. Let's note that I haven't gone in and done any shielding work here. This is all single coils, okay? Obviously, you would go ahead and do that if you were building this thing for real, which I will be after this. But for now, I'm expecting it to be quite loud, quite noisy. So let's not be surprised when that happens. That's an easy thing to fix. I've done tutorials on it before, and we will include one as part of this build as well. But, you know, after we do this stock demo, we're going to try out some other hardware See how it sounds, test out a couple cool things like my, uh, my stuff from Obsidian Wire. We're gonna try one or two of those and then we're gonna take this apart again and do something crazy to it. So last thing before we go ahead and get this assembled, like I said, I mean something crazy. We're gonna do something really cool to this. In the last video, I gave you guys three options for a theme to vote on to help me so that we can kind of decide together what we're gonna do with this guy. And I believe they were something along the lines of futuristic cyberpunk type thing the rustic, more like steampunk style look and more of a natural look. Cyberpunk got a whole bunch of votes. Uh, steampunk's doing okay, not so much for the natural. And hilariously, a bunch of you were like, themes. You should really paint that guitar surf green or uh, white or a burst. I'm, I, won't, I won't be doing that for this one, but we'll, we'll get to those, don't worry. All right, let's start putting this guy together. So we start off with the trim claw in the back. That is the first part that I need to install here. You can wire the wire to it. You can solder it in beforehand if you want, but I generally just go ahead and screw it in part way. Make sure you don't go too far here. You want to keep it good and loose so that you've got enough room to put those springs on. If you do put it in too far, of course, you can just loosen it off, but why bother doing it twice? Now there's a little hook on the trim claw here that you can bend up and force the wire underneath and then bend back down and that makes it a lot easier to solder on so i recommend doing that on ones that have that hook you certainly don't have to you can just solder directly to the surface and not all of them have the hook but that's the easiest way in my opinion soldering in the output jack now so i just put the wires through the holes in the lugs there and solder them on very straightforward sorry about the video quality for that part didn't position the camera properly so I'm way off in the bottom corner. Obviously you guys know how to screw down the output jack so there's nothing for me to tell you there and at this point we have uh, have got our electronics set up. That's it for the electronics part. The rest is just mounting hardware. Very straightforward stuff. You'll notice that I don't bother putting the strap buttons on for this um, because I'm just gonna take them off and replace them anyway and this is just a sound demo. When I go to install the bridge, what I like to do is screw all of the screws in part way when I'm doing either a vintage bridge like this or basically any kind of hardtail non tunematic style bridge. I put them in part way and then I go and set the torque on my drill so that I don't have to worry about cranking them down too much. And again, I don't go all the way. Um, I get them close and then I go in and finish them off. This may not be necessary. It probably isn't necessary, but I'm used to, you know, 
cross tightening patterns for bolts for gaskets and stuff like that and and this just kind of makes my OCD feel better so I go in and carefully tighten them all the last little bit to make sure that they're down to the same torque on each and that's that's about it for the springs for the tremolo arm pretty straightforward if you leave the trim claw loose they're fairly easy and then you can just go tighten it up you can install them either way you can put them on the hooks first and then jam the pins in or vice versa if you're having trouble you can hook something in the loop and pull it over the hook use a screwdriver for that that's what I generally do I like to as you can see here put the washers on the portion of my tuners that comes in from the top so that I don't have to piddle with it after I just set them all up in advance and then hand tighten them all and uh, again these I'm not mounting fully I'm not putting the screws in from the back I'm gonna get them tightened down and just leave them at that because I'll be replacing them eventually I'm using just a normal 10 mil socket that's what I always do I know a lot of people go out and buy those drivers from Stumac and if you don't have any sockets then fine so be it but if you do there's absolutely no reason to have both of those things it just uh, it's completely unnecessary here I'm pre-drilling my screws for the neck just a little bit I'm getting them about halfway in uh, don't stick your finger under there and start drilling that's a bad habit that I've picked up over the years but it's not something that you should be doing hence why I call that a bad habit put those in part way so that it's easier for me to deal with after and then I finish them off and get the neck fully screwed in kind of all at once there at the end and I do a cross tightening pattern for that as well I kind of sped through that because you guys don't need to watch me screw things into place all day but uh, yeah I like to get them part way tightened and then work my way in an X and just finish them off put all the strings through at once because why not who's got time to blow and you guys know how to string up a guitar right so there's really no need for me to go into more detail about that particular aspect of it you just put your strings on don't forget to put your string trees on I actually forgot to do this entirely on the the first strat that I did way back in the day and it did not do me any favors for string tension and uh, tuning stability so for these I go in and I mark them with a pencil and then I take an awl and I mark them with that to get the center and then I go in with a small screwdriver I like to use a short one for this and tighten them down and that's really about it you mark where you want them make sure you put the right one in the right place and uh, and tighten them down I'm gonna be replacing these presumably with string rollers because I like them better when the time comes but we're not quite there yet so stay tuned of course uh, for the rest of this series and we will get to that part shortly here's what we're left with our fully assembled ready to go guitar with no work done to it let's hope that the fretboard is going to be playable I think it will be pretty darn close if not uh, if not quite good enough but there's always improvements that can be made and we will be making those in a video soon don't forget to check out the link in the description if you want one of these and let's get to the demo not bad for noise so far so good
First impressions, not bad. Got a little bit of fret buzz. That is mostly by virtue of setup. I can fix that by doing a truss rod adjustment and doing some work with the saddles. So that's kind of on me. And that does affect the tone. It does affect how it sounds a little bit, unfortunately. Um, but I'm gonna be redoing so much of this that I didn't really wanna mess with that. I wanted this neck nice and straight because I'm gonna be going in and doing a bunch of fret work, et cetera, et cetera. So generally speaking, pretty impressed with that, I think. My 14 fret is a little bit low, so that's that's a bit of a concern. That means that I basically have to do a fret leveling job. Either that or my 15 is a bit high. This is something that you would check with the fret rocker, and we will be doing that in the near future in one of our upcoming videos on this series. What else? The guitar isn't as noisy as I thought it would be. I thought we were gonna be dealing with a whole bunch more hum because I've got an unshielded kind of cheap set of single coil pickups here. Not so bad, really. I'm actually pretty impressed with them. They sounded okay to me. Um, there are definitely better ones out there, but these are totally playable. They work. They sound okay. That cavity does need to be shielded. It will sound better when that's done. And with the fret leveling job and a little bit of other work to the neck to make it more comfortable, I think this is a pretty, pretty nice playable kit we got going on here. But of course, um, I'm not gonna leave it like this at all. So we're gonna make some substantial changes to this thing, it's going to be crazy. I've got a bunch of new tools to demo. I've got some pretty wild ideas. Hopefully I can actually pull them off. Very soon here in our kind of, where we're doing an upgrade video on our Les Paul first. You know, this one, which we also did from a beautiful solo music gear kit. This one plays and sounds great. It's been set up and everything, but we've got a bunch of new upgrade parts. So in case you haven't been following me, We've got tons of new stuff from Solo Music Gear predominantly as well that we're gonna be putting in here to make it all that much better. It's gonna look better, it's gonna sound better, it's gonna play better. I'm super excited for that. 
That's coming next, and then we're getting back to this one. And uh, well, the first thing that I'm gonna do is show you guys how to convert this, pretty straightforward, but still, into a single single and humbucker. And we're gonna demo some awesome new electronics from Obsidian Wire. We're gonna test that out, see how this thing sounds with that gear in it. I think it's gonna be awesome. We're also gonna do some fret work, get this thing set up with some cheap electronics and go ahead and do another demo here with kind of some very basic stuff, the Obsidian Wire kit and some fret work and see how that affects the tone and see what kind of instrument we get out of that. I think it's actually gonna be great. And once all of that is done, we're gonna go next level. We're gonna take this thing apart and do some very ambitious stuff to it. So remember to subscribe if you haven't already because we got some insane stuff coming up. If you want to follow along or you want a kit like this, check out the Solo Music Gear link in the description and pick one up there. Show them some support. They got some great stuff and I think you guys are really gonna enjoy this build. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up so it's easier for other people to find and I will see you next time. Have a good one.